Beep, 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 dee, nee, nee, nee. <clears throat> oh, wait, you're going first. Yep. Welcome to Oddball. I'm Amin El Hassan in New York, Charlotte Wilder. Hello. Thank you, Charlotte. I can't see you, so it's important for me to be able to hear you. Here I am. Coming up a little later. We play another round of Who's Lying? But first, the headlines. John ja Morant is set to make his season debut tonight in New Orleans as his 25-game suspension comes to a close. When asked what the mentality would be in his first game back, sources said he plans on coming out guns blazing. <laughs> Get it? Guns blazing. Yeah. yeah, no, I got it. Thank you. I had to shoot my shot. Ugh. Who let him do? Who let him? Who let him do this one first? Hey, look, this show gets canceled. It's going out with a bang. <laughs> per the Athletics, Sham Charania, Draymond Green has reportedly started the counseling process and is expected to remain sidelined via suspension for at least three weeks. Um, I don't know. I wish every time I went to therapy, I got three weeks off. Yeah, but it's not paid though. Um, I don't know. You want to do three weeks of unpaid therapy? No, mm -mm, not really. In this economy? Sounds awful. Steph Curry became the first player to reach the 3,500 three-point make plateau in a Warriors win against the Brooklyn Nets on Saturday. A day later, Curry's NBA record three-pointer streak ended at 268 games after five years. For perspective, Curry had more consecutive games with at least one three-point make and Grant Hill had total three-pointers made in an 18-year NBA Hall of Fame career. Do the math on that. I'm just saying, if he had just happened to hit one in every one of those 268 consecutive games, that's still more than what Grant Hill made. Food for thought. Oh, thank you. I was hungry. On Friday night, the Spurs ended their 18-game losing streak by beating the Lakers 129-115. to it was the Spurs' fourth win of the season and first since November 2nd. The Spurs' Devin Vassell said, 100% it didn't sound like a normal win. You see people jumping around on the sideline and everything. I'm trying to stay composed. But at the end of the day, it's special. This is a special group. It sure is, Devin. It takes, it takes a real special group to lay, lose 18 games in a row. There's an incredibly radioactive joke to be made right here. But I'm not going to do that. And you know why, Charlotte? Why? Don't. But why? Because of, because of growth. That's why. I'm so proud of you. A kinder, gentler, more mature amino has. Oh, my God. Ooh, that, that joke, though. Ooh. Don't do it. Go on to Giannis. Giannis Antetokounmpo surpassed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar for the most rebounds in Bucks history on Sunday in the Bucks 128-119 to victory over the Houston Rockets. Giannis now has 7,162 career rebounds, obviously all as a buck. After the game, Bucks head coach Adrian Griffin said, quote, and I think we got the game ball. <laughs> and, I, and I said, missed opportunity by Dylan Brooks to be an actual villain and pull out a switchblade and disembowel the game ball. I mean, it's true. You know what Dylan Brooks did, though? What did he do? He got some, he got a new hairdo. And he's <laughs> got the Rockets R braided into his hair which looks pretty cool except that people forget that gerald green did this first it's homage he's paying homage yeah okay or he's trying to pass it off as his own work i mean if he's really trying to be a villain um brooks did receive two texts on sunday night though so you could say he has a hair trigger Boo! that's also a john moran joke sorry sorry ah hey she brought it back sorry Jalen Brunson of the New York Knicks recorded a perfect second half and rocked to a 50-point performance to lead the Knicks over the Suns 139-122. Brunson went 9 for 9 from 3 and became the first player ever to score 30 or more points in a half without a single miss. After the game, Julius Randle made sure to secure the game ball for Brunson after his 50-piece. Missed opportunity by Julius Randle to be the actual Knicks villain and pull out a switchblade to disembowel the ball which is pretty much what every one of his offensive possessions looks like. All the disemboweling I, that could have been going on. I know. I, I, felt, I felt mean. They've been playing better. He's been playing better. I, yeah. I'm sorry, Julius. My bad. Everybody's trying. But uh, after the game, the Instagram account NBA underscore New York 
posted an old video of Jalen Brunson as a child being trained by his father, former nine-year NBA vet and current Knicks assistant, Rick Brunson. Harder. Good. Jog back. Go. Go get the ball. I'm going to throw it to the fence if you don't jog back. It's not fast enough. No follow through, not fast enough. Tired is for the weak. Mentally strong. Go. Yeah, look at that. Little father son activity better and he's pushing yeah. it reminds me a lot of me and my kid oh, like what? minus like the execution and plus a whole lot more arguing a oh. lot more arguing like constant arguing sounds stressful also you see how like rick throws the ball back to the fence tells him like if you don't run hard enough i'm gonna throw it all the way back to the fence mm -hmm. jog back go go get the ball i'm gonna throw it to the fence if you don't jog back i punt it Oh, God. Yeah, I take the ball and I punt it to, like, the adjacent soccer field that, and make that, my kid sprint back and sprint to get in sprint back. That must really inspire your child to try harder. Look, we're for Rick. I don't have right? kids. I can't. I, who am I? I'm just saying. Who am I? Look, watch the video right there. He scored 50 points in the game. Fair. <laughs> Bradley Beal's first season as a son continues to be challenging as he is likely to miss several weeks after suffering a right ankle injury against the Knicks on Friday night after playing just five minutes. <clears throat> Little Bradley, it's been a long, cold, lonely winter. Little Bradley, it feels like years since you have played. Here come the suns, do 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 do. Here come the suns, and I say you'll play soon. Do 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 do. What a coincidence! That singing was also do 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 do. I do think I actually think I've been getting better at singing. It's aggressively stupid. Thank you. On Saturday night, the Kings' Keegan Murray made 12 three-pointers, including an NBA record 11 consecutive makes, scoring a career-high 47 points to lead the Sacramento Kings to a 125-104 victory over the Jazz. Steph Curry was blown away when he was told about Murray's performance in a Warriors press conference as the game was going on. Saying, quote, this is dope. Funny, I thought he said, quote, that used to be us. No. The Warriors' lives have fallen apart like the second act of a Hallmark movie. I know it's like when when the big the big city girl goes home and to her small town and falls in love with the guy at the Christmas tree farm, but then like his wholesome wife shows up and it's like, yep. wait, was did he have a wife this whole time? And then I don't know. It it always ends happy in a Hallmark movie, so maybe there's hope for the Warriors. I mean, she's miserable, he's miserable, the wife makes everything else miserable, everybody's miserable, but somehow ipso facto, like you said, third act happens and then everything's good. So we'll see. Yeah. Also, I don't know. Living in a big city and having a career sounds nice sometimes. Nobody wants to move back to your shitty ass small town. Yeah. Well, I'm was, not... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a big city lawyer in New York. I make a lot of money and I'm <laughs> highly respected. Oh, but I can't have a good time unless I'm at the old dive bar, the old town where the, the, the bartender and the, and, the, and the bar back are all people I went to high school with. And oh, now, get out of here. and now they all have the, like they all work for Santa, and they have chocolate, hot chocolate farms and stuff, and like you have to live Christmas three hundred and sixty five days a year. You kind of lost me on that last. Okay, <laughs> well, four time NBA All Star Demarcus Cousins has signed a deal with the Taiwan Beer Leopards. Um, no way. I, yeah, no, for for real. I have some questions though. Um, I would like to know what a beer leopard is. Although, no matter what it is, Boogie and the Beer Leopard sounds absolutely incredible. Okay, Charlotte, this is real easy. What? You ever had Cheetos? Yeah. <laughs> you, you know who Chester Cheeto is? Is he a beer leopard? Nope. Imagine oh. Chester Cheeto's actual cool older brother. His oh. old, cool older brother, the Beer Leopard. And then Chester was like the little runt, but then he moved to a new town. And obviously he went to high school, but his beer leopard brother was off doing other things. So now he's the only leopard anyone knows in town. So he's like, I'm Chester Cheeto. And everyone's like, oh, he's so cool. He's named after Cheetos. Meanwhile, little do they know, it gets so much cooler. But I feel like the whole point of that is that he's a cheetah. 
Oh, he's not. Because it Cheetos. I like your thing. Lemon. Sorry, forget I said anything. I like it's that. His it's his cousin. It's his cousin. It's his cousin. I like that. Here's a mid headline palate cleanser Jordan Poole being unnecessarily Jordan Poolish. Yeah, he was upset, I guess, on that fall that he took. Oh, that's just a nasty fall there. He's lucky. Thank God we, we really needed that. Do you know that a Poolish is a kind of starter you can use to make sourdough bread? Okay, uh, Luka Doncic had a 40-point triple-double and the Mavs win over the Trailblazers on Saturday night. Doncic finished the game with 40 points, 12 rebounds, and 10 assists. He passed Wilt Chamberlain for fourth on the all-time 40-point triple-doubles list with eight. And I don't know, I'm old enough to remember last week when Luka was like, I'm getting old even though I'm 24 and I don't get any sleep because I have a newborn, which leads me to believe, I mean, that the dad strength has finally kicked in. After losing their 24th consecutive game, it appears that Detroit Pistons fans are really starting to lose it, actually. (laughs) The following post on Reddit went viral. And ladies and gentlemen, brace yourselves. Uh, This is some objectionable material. Should the Pistons kill five of their players to initiate a disaster draft? Now to explain, to explain this madness, the NBA has a disaster draft rule. If God forbid, some catastrophe hits a team where they lose multiple uh, or at least five players, I believe, uh, to an untimely demise. A disaster draft is then done where teams have to protect certain players on their roster, but leave other players unprotected. And then the team that is suffering gets to pick those unprotected players off of all the other rosters. It's never happened before. But much like a lot of these things, you have to have a contingency plan in case it does happen. So the league does have this. So someone on Reddit said, should we kill five players in order to do this? As I said, very objectionable. Also, do I need to send someone over for a wellness check over to Detroit? Yes, several Uh, people. What's what's happening? Several people. What are we doing? And you know, Charlotte, I saw this and I was like, what the f*** is happening on Reddit? So I said, I've got to get to the bottom of this. Investigative journalism. I took a deep dive into Pistons Reddit, as did you. Mm-hmm. And you know what I found? Mm-mm. A lot of it isn't that objectionable. It's actually No, a lot of it's like sort of cute and funny. And also, though, unhinged. Like, I, these people are losing their minds a little bit. Um, they are, but you, in a funny way. In a can funny I read way. you a few of my favorites to me? Uh-huh. Okay, one of my favorites was, what if the Red Wings and Lions both gave the Detroit Pistons their best players? And I like how Reddit marks these things as humor or discussion. This is marked as discussion. Um, nice. <laughs> yeah, so, and, then, and then they just, like, there are a few replies about, you know, who they think would be good from hockey and football to help the basketball players out. I've been especially fascinated by the ongoing series of Piston of the Day until we win a game. Yeah. Names like Josh Smith, James Ennis the Third, uh Amir Johnson, Jason Maxiel. <laughs> like it's it, it really is a beautiful trip down memory lane of all of these pistons of years old who aren't Hall of Famers. It Dave really Bing? Is. Mayor uh, Dave yeah. Bing. I'm a former Detroit mayor mate Dave Bing. Yeah, mayor. Uh mm-hmm. there was also a graphic I like that said uh two, the amount of wins the Pistons have this season. Three. The amount of ejections Draymond Green has this season. I'll do you one better. There are more Marvin Bagley's in this world than the Pistons have wins. And that one really hit me. I was like, oh, they had a point because it's Marvin Bagley the third. There are only two Pistons wins. Or how about this? This Wikipedia entry that is called the Detroit Pistons, an American semi-professional basketball team based in Detroit. God. You know, I do think that losing sports teams generate some of the greatest content you could ever have this is the last one i have and this might be my favorite of of being honest it says the the title is piston help i'm reaching out in a bit of a bind and could use some help my 2003 silverado has hit a snag specifically with the piston and i'm struggling to pinpoint the exact issue number one sputtering engine 
Number two, strange noises. Number three, decreased performance. I've checked the basics like oil levels and spark plugs, but I suspect a more intricate problem lies with the piston. If you can spare some time to offer any guidance, I would greatly appreciate it. And one of the replies was, have you tried rebuilding the engine and starting <laughs> over again? And that to me is, mwah, the best that Piston's Reddit has to offer. That's it. There it is. Although I actually, I want to leave everybody with this picture. And it is a picture of a Christmas tree. And there is a piece of cardboard on it, the only ornament. And it says depression basketball. Oh, I know. Oh. We're going to play Who's Lying. Are you ready? Okay, I'm ready. Let's do it. I love Who's Lying. This is my favorite game. And we're going to start in Golden State, which isn't even a real okay. state. We're going to start in San Francisco. Andrew Wiggins okay. on the challenge of reclaiming his spot on the Warriors starting lineup at a press conference said, I'm blessed to be here. If I want to get out of this little doghouse, I got to just keep fighting my way out. He, he's telling the truth, but does he actually believe it? That he's blessed so to be count? there? So if so, for instance, if I were to believe the Earth is flat, mm -hmm. but I said clearly <laughs> the Earth is round, and I just have to accept it. If I don't believe in what I just said, am I lying? Even though what I said is actually true. Oh, see, this is an interesting wrinkle. Level. I think for the purposes of this game, yes, I think lying for our purposes means somebody is saying something they don't believe, even if what they're saying is actually factually accurate. Okay, I don't believe that I'm blessed to be here. Okay. I think he's like, oh, wow. everyone goes through rough streaks. I mean, Clay's having the worst year of his career. You never talked about benching him. But, right. oh, oh, Andrew, and I go through my, my personal issues and my, my things that happen in my personal life. But no, I don't get any grace. No, I don't think he feels blessed at all to be there. I feel like he feels like he's a scapegoat. Yeah, but and yes, you know, he is blessed to be there. He is blessed to be there. The to me, the clear giveaway that he doesn't believe what he's saying is he says, "If I want to get out of this little doghouse, little doghouse, yep." There's a smoking gun. Okay, uh, well, staying with Golden State, Steph Curry. Mm -hmm. Um, we touched on this in headlines. We didn't decide if he was lying though. When he was told about Keegan Murray's uh, 12 three-pointers in one game, he said, this is dope. Was he lying? He's absolutely lying. I mean, yeah. again, it again. is dope. Again, it is dope, but he doesn't think it's dope. He thinks it's bull. Not because it's an incredible feat, because it is. It's because it's happening to this young upstart team an hour and a half up the road from them. He remembers when they used to talk about them this way, the Golden State Warriors is that kind of, you see this, you see that where people would be asking people in other press conferences, teams had nothing to do with them. Like, oh, did you see what the Warriors did tonight? Steph remembers that. And now he's like, damn, I done came on the other end of the spectrum now and I'm the old dude. And you they're asking me, did you see this cool thing that happened? Yeah, yeah, it's dope. We sort of, I sort of saw his life flash before his eyes in that moment, and then he immediately started talking about Clay. He was like, Clay almost, Clay almost did that one time. So, uh, okay, moving on. We're going to take a little trip to Detroit, where Coach Monty Williams talked about what it's like being, being out and about in the community, even though the team has been uh, bad in record-setting ways. I mean, they've terrible. been terrible, <laughs> terrible. Yeah. Monty said, it's tough to even put it into words. Even with this losing streak, I'm around town taking my kids to games. I still get an unbelievably great deal of support, and it means the world to me. In this same article, I might add, he also talks a lot about going to church. Far be it from me to call a God-fearing, church-going, all-around decent human being like Monty Williams a mm -hmm. liar. I'm not calling Monty Williams a liar by any stretch. Monty Williams is not a liar. But then some lies he's telling right there. There's a difference between the action and the actor. The actor is not a liar. The action is a lie. Hell no, man. What are you talking about? There is no way that these words are not lies. There's absolutely. You're telling me he goes out in public and everything. Monty, you're doing a good <laughs> job, buddy. Keep up the good work. Look, Charlotte, you and I in headlines. We've been down there in, in Pistons Reddit. 
Oh, we know how these people. And wait, wait, wait. We left a lot of meat on that bone. I encourage everybody to go put on your own hazmat suit and get down in there. <laughs> the people are furious. I think people can accept being bad. Mm-hmm. They can't accept being historically bad, and they damn sure can't accept being historically bad that many games in a row. Or so, something else that they keep bringing up is that Monty is the second highest paid coach in the NBA. They love to talk about too. how he is making a whole bunch of money and losing a whole lot of games. Coming up upon slow realizations. So, look, man, I, I don't, I'm not saying that people are hissing and booing wherever he goes. But when he says, unbelievably great deal of support, yeah. which I guess... Technically, if one person says keep up the good work, <laughs> I would say that's unbelievably that's a lot of support because I would believe that everybody would say, Yeah, what's going on? What's happening? So right. maybe he is telling the truth, his own okay. special truth. Maybe this is what the opposite of Wiggins is doing, right? Wiggins was telling the truth, but he didn't believe it. So he was uh-huh. actually lying and telling the truth. <laughs> In this case, Monty is lying, but he believes the lie. So it is actually the truth coming out of his mouth. Wow. Okay. Look at that. God, Ways. I'm yeah. Um, so after Jalen Brunson had a 50-point game against the Suns, mm-hmm. Kevin Durant described Jalen Brunson as a Hall of Fame player if he keeps it up. Was Kevin Durant lying when he said that about Jalen Brunson? No, and here's why. If he keeps it up, what's it? Scoring 50 points on a perfect second half? In that case, yeah. Yeah. He's right. He will be a Hall of Famer if he keeps that up. What else, what else could it be, right? And this is I feel like Bill Clinton's going to walk through that door right now. Like, with <laughs> def- def- depends what the definition of is, is, right? So yeah. 25.5 a game, six assists, 45% from three. Yeah, if he keeps that up, he is going to be a Hall of Famer. But that I if is doing a lot of heavy lifting there for Kevin Durant. Some, that if is in there throwing extra plates on. And by the way, I love Jalen Brunson. And you know what? Maybe, maybe he can keep this up. Maybe this is what he's been as a Nick, a 25 point per game player. Maybe that's his reality from now yeah. on. But we're in year two of that reality, and we've got some ways to go. So I want to say Durant wasn't lying. Okay. But he was telling the truth from a certain point of view. Okay. Uh, we're going to go to Denver, where Aaron Gordon talked about Nikola Jokic's off-season activity. Because if you remember, Aaron Gordon visited Jokic in Serbia. There were all those cute videos of Gordon meeting Jokic's horses, and Jokic looked happier than I've ever seen him look in a basketball court. Mm-hmm. Gordon said every single day he works on his body. Every single day he eats right. And every single day he spends time with his family. All right. So this is where we're going to get super technical, right? Because <laughs> we got the the lie telling the truth. Yeah. We've got the truth told as a lie, right? Okay. We've got the truth told as a certain point of view. And now I present to you the truth, depending on the punctuation. <laughs> Okay, do go on. Every single day, he works full stop on his body, question mark. No. Every single day, he eats, comma, right, question mark. Every single day, he spends time with his family. See, with some, I didn't change any words. The words are all verbatim. But if I put a period here, a comma there, a question mark there. I think we get a truth that is more uh, congruent with the Nikola Jokic that we have observed coming off of his off seasons. Yes. He's definitely eating, right? Right. He's definitely eating. (laughs) Pause, right? (laughs) He's working on his body, on his buddy. I don't know. (laughs) He also, uh, we saw all of those clips of him out at Serbian clubs. So Party maybe he's, he's, he's eating right at clubs, which maybe. means like maybe he's getting with the wings, the celery and carrots. Do they have wings in Serbia? Maybe that's his cardio working on his body. There you go. All right. Well, can't wait for more people to say stuff and we can play this game again. Yeah, it's not cool in the NBA to do like nobody. Nobody hits a three and is like three. No. It's always like. You gotta, you gotta go like this. 
or or, or, I would be the or my favorite who hits when they three. do ooh my eyes in in the three or Jalen <laughs> Jalen Brunson I would be the loser who hits a three and is like we got it folks we got it. <laughs>